uh, been on a lot of stages with a lot of people and uh, thank you guys for letting us have a little family time there and uh, get my headset back in order. Are you encouraged to be in the house of the king today? I am. Less encouraged about uh, what I'm trying to do right here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there we go. But I love the fact that Jesus is in charge. And when he is in charge, I find that his leadership is exactly what I was designed for, what we were designed for. When Jesus, when God leads, it's exactly how life was intended. And uh, today, as I look uh, with you uh, at the end of 2017, I can't even hardly believe I just said that. The end of 2017. Can you believe that? I just got started. I was like, what happened here? And, and you got to know me. I, my battery recharges really fast. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty high energy. I still have the pleasure, oh, the immense pleasure and honor to serve students. And I get to hang out with everybody that's sixth grade all the way through 28. I have four departments that we work. Oh, a huge, a great staff that is just so talented. Amazing people. But uh, my battery still recharges really quick. So when Nick said, hey, you want to come out? And do an all-nighter, I was immediately excited. <laughs> well, I, I, actually, I actually do try to sleep at least four hours a night, uh, up to six. At six, my battery's recharged, and I have to jump somewhere. And, uh, and fortunately, uh, there's a lot to do in the world today. And uh, as I look, though, at closing out... 2017, I just cannot quite believe how quickly it really is gone. Now, all the kids that are in this building right now, do we have all the kids here? Or there, I guess there's some in the nursery, but most, a lot of the kids I'm looking out and, and quite a few of them are here. You guys are amazing. And it seems like maybe 2017, if you even pick one day out, say like Monday in 2017, it goes kind of slow. Especially if you're sitting in school and you're trying to think about math or English, or whatever your unfavorite subject is. I hope those are neither the case. But, but whatever it is, I remember when I was your age, and I would sit there in school, and I was like, tick, tock. <laughs> it, you know, you can go tick, but when the talk is really slow, boy, it's a problem. And I would watch the clock almost stop and go backwards <laughs> while I'm in class. I'm like, no, 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 go that way, that way. And man alive, it would go slow sometimes. But I used to hear, you know, like the, uh, the, the wise people around me, they would say, one day, one day, it's going to go really fast. And I was like, yeah, all right, this is really slow. And sure enough, sure enough, I'm still a young guy, but hey, here's the deal. It goes so quick now. It is literally like getting on. Do you guys have uh, like a pretty quick hill? I, I've heard some sledding. Where do you go if you're going sledding here in Hastings? Yeah, that hill right there. And you get on and you put wax on the bottom of the sled. And you hop on it with a large space to run and get momentum. You know what I'm talking about? And you hit that ice. Because everything's ice here. <laughs> it's like right now. It's all ice. It's, there's no snow. And you hit that at peak speed. That's exactly how I feel 2017 just went. It's like sizzling with fire underneath my sled. Okay? It is really fast. So as I look at closing this thing out, what an honor, man, to do it right here in Hastings, Nebraska, all nighter, which we're going to get our full money's worth. We're not wasting anything in 2017. But 2018... We're going to launch this puppy full blast because God's in charge. I don't care what's on the news. I mean, I do, but, but I don't. I watch the news probably too much, but I like to be advised. I like to know what's up and what's not. And, uh, and, and, but I found this. Wow. They're not in charge. Oh, yeah, they got elected. There's all kinds of people who have all kinds of positional names and whatever. And God has placed them, by the way, where they're at and who they are and what they're doing. But ultimately, the God that I serve, the person of Jesus, who died on a cross, and as we just said this morning, he came as a babe in a manger. He died on a cross and then he rose again. And today, he's interceding for us from the right hand of the Father. Wow. That gives me some great hope. And great 
energy for a new year. Doesn't matter what all's going on around me. I know Jesus wins. And man, I'm really super happy about that. Here's what I do know. There are challenges at every stage. And uh, Bryson, your song and the song that we chose this morning and it kind of come around, talks about some storms, some challenges, some things that, that may be setbacks even. How many had some tough times in 2017? You had something that at least once, and yeah, all of us. Man, we, uh, we have times where things are not going well or as planned. And that sometimes really grips our lives and our emotions and our heart and, 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 and everything about us. We think, whoa, I can't make it. Well, we can if we're with Jesus. I want to take you to a place in Scripture, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew. And uh, if you kind of split right in the middle of the Old Testament and the New Testament, you know uh, it's right there. Matthew is the first, first Gospel in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 14. It's been a high day of ministry. Uh, we, I, personally, we've had an, an unprecedented year of ministry where God has led us. And uh, tra transitioning, uh, as Nick described about uh, 15 months ago, to a brand new location where God led us by design. And uh, wow, the great things that God has done. We celebrate that. I, I am just, uh, I, I'm amazed and so grateful that God would, would use me, would use us to do his work. And he has been, which I'm super stoked about. But you know what? Um, these guys, back in the day, with Jesus... They were always following him. And as Jesus came into his ministry, we find that uh, he was a pretty creative guy. Uh, he, he didn't just stand behind a pulpit. Matter of fact, in the church of his day, he wasn't really allowed okay, to stand behind the pulpit. Can you believe that? The God who created everything in the whole wide world, if it was church day on, in his times, oh yeah, he had argued with people in the synagogue when he was 12, and people figured out, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. But he wasn't really allowed. He wasn't the pastor, like with the microphone. You know, he was kind of doing creative ministry wherever he could. And I, I, uh, I want to take you to a time in his ministry where he was doing just that. Uh, he was out there, and uh, he had done some amazing things just prior to where we're going to talk today. And uh, he had done some amazing things in ministry uh, that, uh, well, for one, he had fed 5,000 people. Now, I've had some pretty big events, uh, been around some pretty big events where they actually fed, I, I think probably the biggest crowd I saw maybe fed was, uh, I don't know, ten to 20,000 people, you know, fed. And, uh, and that takes a lot of boxes, you know, a lot of chicken, uh, you know, Chick-fil-A, that kind of stuff. It was, it was a pretty big deal. Uh, Jesus had zip, pretty much, where he was at that, that earlier this day. And, uh, and as you know the story, he had found a little guy who was willing to give up what he had. Gave everything he had, matter of fact, in his box lunch. And Jesus took those simple little fish and pieces of bread and, and he multiplied it and fed 5,000 plus. Wow. Can you imagine watching that happen? You know, I, being the disciples and they're, they're passing this food out, you just keep coming back and there's more and there's more. And you knew where the first one started. You knew, you saw it. And there's more and there's more. Well, that's the way God operates. And they had been on the front lines of that. That day, there was more than they needed. Matter of fact, baskets left over. Wow. Pretty much a high peak. I, I love high peaks. I, I, I love to get up. I climbed Pikes Peak back in the day. We were traveling and touring out in Colorado. And I climbed all the way to the top, over 14,000 feet, all the way to the top, and stood on the top of that puppy. I love it. I love peaks. But you can't stay there. You see, that day... After all that was over, um, and, and, and Jesus was, was doing his ministry, um, he actually had to kind of pull it back down a little bit. And, uh, and as, we see, as we see what God was doing, I, I want to just start with verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat. So kind of reality check all of a sudden. We've got to travel again. <laughs> that's, that's a constant thing. We have to move. We have to keep moving and whatever. And, and that day, uh, the choice of their transportation, being by the sea to get back home, was a little boat. Some sort. Uh, otherwise known as a bark. 
a little piece of kind of wood and maybe a sail, some oars, paddles. Pretty uh, elementary stuff. They were used to it. Most of them had grown up fishermen. They knew what was going on. This was nothing different than us popping in our car and heading back. And after that huge day of ministry, uh, he said, hey guys, I'm going to finish up here. You go ahead. You go ahead. Hop in the boat. And um, Jesus made the disciples go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. I, I don't know how the customs were exactly of their day, but uh, as Jesus kind of released the crowds and uh, in his own personal way kind of capped that ministry. His teaching, all that had been done, the miracles, amazing things that had happened. He also knew that the day of ministry was not quite over yet. You see, he was still teaching and he was still ministering even while it looked like the day was ending. And what I'd like to say at this point as 2017 gets ready to close, God is eternal and in one eternal cycle there's no beginning, there's no ending to God. He just sees it all at once. While we're marking time and we're closing and opening and shifting pages, God is at work. 2017, 2018, any other number you want to put to it, God is at work. He was in that moment. The guys hopped in the boat. And uh, how many of you uh, like boats? He, uh, do you, any, I don't know how close. I, yeah, there's some water around here and different things. I saw a little bit over here. And, you know, I, don't, I don't know if you get in many boats or whatever. Uh, I, I like boats. I don't get to get in as much as I'd love to, but I love getting into a boat. There's something, you know, it just gets you out of your zone. Like, I'm, I'm a land lover, you know. I, I like to walk on uh, terra firma, you know, and, and keep my ground and know where I'm at. I'm kind of in control of that. That feels pretty good. But you hop in a boat, totally different scene. The guys hopped in the boat. They were cruising across. And as we read on, after he had dismissed them, he went up into a mountainside by himself to pray. Another good thought, just uh, before we get into the play of things and what God was really doing, even God himself, in human form, had to take personal recoup time. Wow. Let me just ask you a question. How did you do in 2017 at taking care of yourself? Oh, I didn't say being selfish. I said taking care of yourself. Boy, I have to real. I'm preaching right here today, okay? Because it's so easy. It's so easy for us to be a part of so many great things. So many good things that we lose track of just simply taking a time out. Jesus did it, and this was one of those times, man, it had been a full day. And in his physical side, in the humanness of God, Jesus in the person, he went up, it says, by himself and got away. I'm here to tell you, every age, I don't care how young you are, you might be like three, okay? That's cool. That's very cool. Matter of fact, I have an almost two-year-old granddaughter, and she's extremely cool. I, I love hanging out with her, man. She is like nonstop. I think she got grandpa's battery. Well, probably you guys have the same battery, but either way. <laughs> man, I mean, it never ends. It's just like always going. Here's the, here's the deal. We got to shut it off by ourselves sometimes and recoup. I'm going to challenge you. Maybe, maybe you won't get anything else out of this sermon today, but I'm challenging you to take some time this year and recoup. I'm challenging you to, you to take some time away from everything else. And I'm even going to say this, shut everything down. Phone, TV, however you listen to music, whatever, whatever you got. Shut it all down and get silent. You see, I know especially hanging out with, with young people, and, and, and I'm still very young at heart, and we have a lot of good times. But here's the deal, we don't like silence. When it's silent, you have to think deeply. When it's silent, there's no distractions. You have to think clearly in those moments about something. Even if your eyelids close and you see the back of your eyelids, you know, it's like, whoo, then you got to think. But we keep our lives so full, even when we're sleeping. Oh, I can't sleep without this and that and this and that. We got 10 things going on while we're sleeping. We're not even hardly sleeping anymore. But you know what? 
Jesus shut it all down, went up in top of the mountainside, and he was there alone to pray. Now, here's the other thing I know, and let, let, give me just a little leverage and, 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 a, and a little favor here as, as, as I give you my version of this thing as I observe it. He's looking up there, taking time to pray, but he probably could see from his vantage point, if it was up above, he could probably see that little boat making its way far away. And with the, with the human eye, he probably had a little bit of attention. I know I would have if, if my team was on the water that night, late at night, and I wasn't with them. I'd be going, okay, I'm just making sure. Yeah, there they go. There they go. Knowing that it wasn't going to be that nice. See, God knew that. They didn't know it. No one else knew. Jesus knew. And I'm here to tell you, as 2018 gets ready to start, Jesus knows where you're at. He knows exactly who you are. He knows your name. He knows everything you've been through to this point. But here's the beauty of it. He knows what's going to happen. He knows the future. I don't know anybody else like that. Oh, I know there's some people that try to cop it out. Maybe they have a few skills, especially if they're like, uh, you know, in cahoots with the other side of things. But here's the deal. God knows. He's already been there. That night, as everything shut down, the little boat, we read further. Later that night, he was alone there, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted. Now, that's an old-fashioned word, okay? Buffeted means tossed and driven or shaken heavily by the waves because the wind was against it. Wow. Now, this is one thing. I love being in boats. I like smooth water. <laughs> boats, smooth water. I love that. Uh, Turks and Caicos Islands, I was preaching down there, and they took me out in this boat, and this guy navigating for me, he got it all, whoa, you know, we were up, we had computers in the front, and he had computers all around the front, and I was like, this is not going to be too good. I, you know, computers hitting waves and stuff, I was like, I got to see this. And he navigated his way. Not only did we have to, like, keep it somewhat smooth in the waves, but he had to navigate through the canals in that uh, peninsula, in that area where we were at in the islands. He had to navigate, and he knew where he was going. He knew where the deep spots were. If I'd been driving, oh boy, we'd have been up on a sandbar, flipping, you know, just completely out of sorts. He knew where to guide it. I don't know how the computers turned out because they took a beating. I don't know what happened to those things. I didn't have to be in charge of that part. But I like smooth water. When you get in and you're like, Pew. man, I love that. I used to eat breakfast down in Hollywood, Hollywood Beach. I'd go down there early as the sun was coming up, and it looked like one big lake. There was hardly even a ripple some mornings. Just, Pew. this was not that lake. They were in the middle, and their boat literally was getting ready to come apart. These guys were in the middle of this thing, and they were pretty, they were pretty well, uh, you know, they had a lot of experience. They were advised well on what to do when your boat is in a storm. Well, here's the deal. They were a considerable distance from land, so nobody's bailing. They're not hopping. <laughs> They're in the boat, and the wind was against it. And shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, Walking on the lake, on the sea. Now here's what you got to know. Most of these disciples, they had grown up in a time and a place where uh, there were spirits talked about. The spiritual world was, was very evident. And, and some, maybe even fables about how spirits would haunt. And, uh, and so they were kind of superstitious in a way, even though many of them had a great biblical context. I think this night, probably that other side kicked in because I can see Peter and, and his brothers as they're trying to get home he goes hey check it out ghost ghost and that's not a good word okay. I, I don't talk about ghosts very much I hope I never have to meet one but I do know this there's a spiritual warfare going on at all times Spiritual wickedness in high places. Well, that night, these guys went into almost an animated version. I can see it now, where they're like, we are going to die. Not only the storm is going to crack our boat in half, but we can't get away from the ghost. And here he came. See, they, they didn't have the script. We got the script. We're already okay with it. Okay, They didn't have the script. They're out there like... <sighs> bailing, trying to get the sail all corrected, everything else. And here comes a ghost to get them. You ever had a dream 
You're dreaming away, you're sleeping, and you have this dream, and something really bad starts happening. And, and there's like the bad guy, or the ghost, or whatever it is, and here he comes, he's coming after you, and you're like, I'm going to run! And you're like... And you can't move. You're like paralyzed. That's exactly where they were at real time. Here in the middle of the sea, kicking up waves, man, it's crashing, probably lightning and thunder. It is a bad storm. Here's the ghost coming at him. It's a bad day, all right? It was a bad night. Jesus speaks into it. Follow me closely because we're going to work ahead pretty quick. Jesus had a lesson that he wanted to teach, not only the whole group, but Peter specifically. And it was getting ready to happen. Here comes Jesus. The Bible says that as he walked out, Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. You see, that's a beautiful thing about Jesus. He's not trying to trick us. He's not trying to be uh, cool. Uh, he's not trying to show us up and embarrass us and then we learn. From... No, he's trying to be there to guide us. Now I have to tell you, the lesson that we're going to learn this morning very quickly is that Peter, much like us, okay, was still trying to figure it out in his own way, with his own power, so he could take control. Peter wanted to be in charge of what was going on. Now, you know, granted, all the studies I've seen and scholars much smarter than I would probably tell you many things about Peter, and he was not inhibited. <laughs> he, he was a voice. He was an action man. Many times he did before he thought, and he would speak before he would get his conclusions together. Yeah, he was not your analyst. <laughs> he was an action guy. Nothing wrong with that. It takes all kinds to make the world go around. But here's the deal. That night, Peter couldn't help himself because when the voice was spoken, I hear him ignite. Because number one thing, here it is, guys. Peter wanted to know that Jesus was there for him. It was personal. All right? Now, I know Peter, he cared about his other disciple friends and brothers and, you know, whatever. And we all do too. But when it really comes down, when the shakedown is on, <laughs> Every one of us want to know it's going to be okay for us. God, where are you? Are you here for me? Sounds kind of selfish, but it's really human. It's really human. We are personally individuals. Wow. Well, here's the deal. Every time, okay, I think about this response. Jesus is perfect. We know that. He's God. Okay, but I think about what my response would have been because Peter, you know, he was kind of a troublemaker. He was kind of high maintenance. He was a little bit of a problem, sort of, to mentor and all, you know, of all the people that Jesus had on his team, you know, he Jesus could have really had a little revenge moment. You know what I'm saying? It was like, okay, this guy's gonna pay. I'm not gonna kill him, but almost, you know, <laughs> he's like, I'm not gonna make him die yet. Uh, and there it was. Jesus had this moment where he could have taken that. And what did he say? Come. Come. Wow. He wanted to deliver Peter personally. Now here's the clincher. What God requires is hardly ever in our capacity for ease or complacency. It gets us out of the boat. I don't know where you're at today. Uh, what, what, what a great time. I'm just meeting all of you for the very first time and, and enjoying uh, the stories and, and, and as the ministry is happening here. Here's what I know. Here's what I know. Jesus is there for you. He knows who you are, where you're at, and he wants to do something great in this coming year. He wants to teach you some lessons that will make you great. Peter had the invitation right there. And it wasn't, okay, Peter, keep safe over there, and I'm going to take care of you. Don't worry about it while you're going. No, he said, come. And that meant now Peter's going to have to step out. Those of us that have been around the church, we've heard this story a million times. We know. Comfort zone, out of the, all this stuff. Peter had to take a step of action in order to actuate. And there's three simple things that I want to get across to you this morning. And they're simply this. Peter's focus in that moment, in the middle of the storm, was on Jesus. 
Wow. What a great place in 2018 for your focus to be. Oh, I know you've got a job. I know you've got a family. You've got a lot of responsibilities, probably some hobbies that are like whew, huge, whatever. Kids, you got school, you got sports, you're in band, you got all kinds of stuff. But keep your focus on Jesus no matter what. Peter had that right in this moment. Of all the things Peter wasn't and, we, and didn't have together, in this one moment of time, Peter's focus was absolutely in the right place. Because you know what it did? It caused action. And he responded, and his focus was on Jesus, and he had been in this circumstance that looked really terrible. And he stepped out of the water, onto the water from the boat. Now, I don't know. I, I love to swim. I, I love water. But I've never seen anybody, I've never walked on water. When I step on water, straight down, baby. All 260. I'm a football player. All right? All, the whole linebacker goes down. All right? Underwater. And I can go pretty deep if I don't do something. All right? Peter, he, he was a fisherman. He knew. Yeah, he'd been in the water a lot. You got to swim or you don't stay. He was walking on waves now. This is really cool. Now, I know you've seen the advertisements of like sandals or something where somebody comes out on water. That's not real. Okay. It's a glass box or something underneath there, you know. This was for real. There's no glass boxes, nothing else. Peter's like, whoa, dude, check this out. Focus is on Jesus. Well, he's looking right at him. He's like, whoa, this is it right here. I like this. You know, he's getting on with it. And he's going to see Jesus. His faith is in Jesus because he believed Jesus enough with that one word of command. That he obeyed it. Wow, how many commands have you heard only one word deep and you did it? That's a pretty big deal. Jesus says, come. He goes, Pfft. And he's walking. His faith is in Jesus. Now here's the third thing that's really important. His fellowship. Those wrapping, loving, calming, supportive, protective arms of his maker are going to be wrapped around him in just a few moments. He's getting closer. His focus, faith, and now, boy, he's going to feel the arms of Jesus. And that's where he's at. Wow. There's no better place, by the way. When your focus is on Jesus and your faith is secure, you're walking obediently, whatever he says, that fellowship in those moments, wow, there's nothing like it. He was just seconds away as the story unfolds. But here's where it clinched. Here's where something changed. When Peter saw the wind, boisterous or huge, there's where it changed. What happened to Peter's focus in that moment? Oh man, all this stuff's going on. Woo! He's almost to Jesus. I don't know if a wave slapped him in the face. I don't know if a flash of lightning caught his attention and spun him around. I don't, somehow his focus left the only one that was going to be able to help him in that storm. And he saw the wind. Now here's what I want to simply say in the simplicity of this moment. Us in the word, God speaking. Where has your attention been if it hasn't been on Jesus? I'll tell you this. If you're looking to anything else but the author and finisher of our faith, you will be let down. Peter found that out. <laughs> in that moment of time, his focus changed, and he was just about to Jesus. I mean, he was so close. It was going to be so great. The others are, you know, we don't have much mention of them right now in this part of the story, but they're like, oh, this guy's in trouble. You know, they had seen Peter in trouble a lot, I'm sure. But now, it was like, he's going to die. They're still in the boat, man. They're not moving. <laughs> they're still bailing. They're bailing water. Peter, he's out in the midst of it, and he lost his focus. Let me just pause long enough to ask you the question in 217, 2017. Have you lost your focus? Has there been a point at which you knew, well, I've been a whole lot closer to God. I, I've fellowshiped closely with God earlier. Where's your focus been this year? Here's the reason I ask that. Because you have a new opportunity right now. God is always there. He's always saying, come. He's always reaching out to us in every challenge of life. I don't care what your age is in this room today. It doesn't matter. All of us have challenges. God is saying, come. Jesus is saying, come. 
And it's up to us to make that choice. Peter had made the right decision. He's making his way. Something got his attention. And now he's looking at his circumstance, not his Savior. He's looking at his circumstance, which is the wind. That's really what was causing all the waves, the big problem. There's a huge storm getting ready to kill him and all of his buds. And man, they had just had like miracles from God just a few minutes ago. Here's what Peter had said prior to this. Did you hear the doubt in his voice? Jesus, if that's really you, if that's you, if, if, boy, that's another small word with huge implications. If that's really you. What, Peter? I mean, we can really take it out on Peter right now, can't we? We, we know the story. We're like, you're an idiot, dude. You don't get it, do you? You just saw Jesus feed 5,000 people earlier in the day, and you're asking if? Jesus just told you, don't be scared. Now, here he goes. If that's really you, Jesus said, come. He's out there now. Oh, boy, he, he, he responded to that again. He wanted the good stuff. And somehow, in his humanity, he was now distracted. His focus was not on Jesus, not on the Savior anymore, but on the circumstance. His faith now, seemingly was paralyzed. Let me just pause that. At home with my kids, I have a certain pause button. You guys know the pause button? It's like, whoop. It's like, whoop. We hit the pause button. Let's pause that for just a second. I was 10 years old, growing up in central Indiana, farm country. Man, my grandpa, big farm. We always put up hay. We had crops, animals, all kinds of great stuff. At the end of the season, my dad would bring, because we lived more in town. My grandpa's farm was just outside of the, the city limits. We would bring hay into our garden, big garden area. We stacked it up because we usually covered it over, you know, through the winter and all that. Well, I got to make a fort every year. Every year, man, I made a fort out of hay. And it was so cool. Me and my best friend Tom, my sister, I had one sister. We had a dog, little dog, just, you know, barely there. But it was a dog. And uh, <laughs> you could call it that. And uh, Mitzi was our dog's name. And, and we were cruising through. I had it all put together, this huge fort. I had, the, like, the walking planks and all this stuff, man. It was a tower. And, uh, and I was out there, and it was coming down to the end of the day. And kids, I don't know, you know, during the summer, it's kind of late. How, how, how late is it when the sun goes down? At 9, 10 o'clock, something like that? Yeah, it was, it was, it was getting late. And I said, hey, guys, we've got to get inside the fort. So I had my army inside the fort. And, and I was the captain uh, of the guard. And I had, uh, you know, every, every soldier has to have, you know, tools, weapons. I had like a flashlight, you know, those kind of things. And uh, I was set up, and I was making my rounds. Everybody's safe inside my fort. Something caught my eye. It was getting really dark. I could see the house way off in the distance. A little light there on the back porch. And I knew, I knew all my backups were right there. If I ever needed anything, the other army, my dad, was there. Okay? And all I had to say was his name. At least that was my experience. This particular night, I saw something coming through the leaves in the garden. The garden wasn't in full harvest yet. We still had, and I believe these were zucchini leaves. They're like huge, like elephant ears. And as only my imagination could have it in that moment, something was in the weeds. Because there were weeds in our garden too. And I could see it moving. I, I didn't know if it was the Loch Ness Monster that had come to Indiana. I didn't know if there were dinosaurs still roaming the earth that had come to life all of a sudden in the summer. I don't know. It, it was under neath these leaves and here it came it was like it was coming I was like oh dude this is bad I had my flashlight immediately the only weapon that I had on sight at least you want to see what's going to kill you it makes sense okay it's pretty dark I'm like nothing man my, my light is not even working now my flashlight's dead I'm like oh boy I'm not even going to get to see my death what's going to kill me this is bad. And I, I remember inside my stomach, you know when you get real scared? Something in your stomach goes, Boop, and then your ice, your, your veins turn to ice. Everything goes, Boop. I got all that. I was like, Boop. everything is freezing up. And I was like, oh boy, this is serious. It's, it's coming to eat us. Now, I couldn't tell the rest of the backups here. I didn't want to let my guard down too quick because... 
you know, you're a soldier. You got to lead, and uh, and at ten, you got to really lead. You, you don't even have a precedent yet, and there's nothing going on, and you, you got to lead. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna take this thing off. Here it comes. It's in the weeds. It's coming for me. I turned around several times, and this is what I finally did. I decided, okay, there are no help at all. My dog's asleep. My sister is much younger than me. She's going to die. And my best friend, he's a good thinker, but not very strong. So we're, we're still in bad shape. All right, it's me. And I looked around, and I did what every soldier has to do at some point when the battle gets too rough. The big R. All right? You're thinking about retreat. I'm considering these plans. I'm thinking which way and how fast. But before I do, I'm like, all right, before I bail, I better at least give backups the order. Hey, Dad! And I yell. I won't really yell this morning. It'd be too loud. I yelled and I knew. I was so aware from previous history and experience that my dad would be there just like that. Nothing was opening up. No lights were flashing. Nobody was checking. You know, nothing. I mean, my mom, you know, she can defend pretty well. She's pretty savage, you know, at times. Especially when I needed discipline. <laughs> she was, whoa! Nothing. I try again. Dad! I'm yelling, man. Nothing. I tried one more time, and I upped the volume, because now, right over in this area right here, underneath these leaves, whoa, whoa, I mean, it was really close now. I was like, oh boy, this is it. It's, it's, it's me or him or it, whatever. And I yelled one more time. I saw no doors. I saw nobody helping out. And I did the big R. I jumped. It was 10 feet. I jumped 10 feet. You know, the slow-mo. I landed, all right? And I was running immediately. You guys know the road runner from way back in the day. I was the road runner at that moment. I had left my army behind me. I was not a good leader. I didn't care. I just wanted to live. And here's the deal. I was running I, I, as fast as I could. I just went straight through the garden to the house. And as I was getting to the house, I looked back over my shoulder just to do a little spin to see who was following or did they make it or was the monster eating them. And all I saw was my sister had also made the voyage. She was coming out around, and she had thrown our dog asleep in the midair. He's like, whoa, whoa, he woke up, he lands, and he's running. All three of us are getting away, but my friend Tom did not make it out. In the middle of the most horrific night of his life, I'm sure. He got the flashlight working. He said he was a thinker, okay? He was like, whew. He got it all working, and all I saw was this light jiggling in, in the darkness, and I heard this last scream. It's in the weeds! And I was gone. I didn't go back. Horrible. I didn't go back or anything. I hope he's recovered through all the counseling and everything. He said, no, he's a pastor. He's fine. Uh, God's helped him, I'm sure. Here's what I know. I retreated because the circumstances, at least in my view, were way out of my league. And I wasn't going to survive. I made the call. Now, I got to tell you, just to end that little clip, because we got to get back to Peter. I went to the front of the house, and I'm hanging off the trim on the outside of the door. And we had one of those little half moon-shaped glasses, you know, like that. And I'm hanging because I could see, and I'm, I'm beating the door down. I'm 10, hanging off the top of the trim. I'm like, Mom, Dad, I'm trying to get somebody to live, you know. And I see my mom. I, I would have to call it sauntering. <laughs> She wasn't moving with any rescue at all in mind. See, what she knew was what I didn't. I opened the door after she unlocked it, burst into the house, and she started laughing. And then I knew I had been had. My backups. My dad was in the garden <laughs> making all this stuff happen. Oh, boy, we had such a great time. And you know what? I survived it, and we have great memories that we laugh about. My friend Tom, <laughs> it's a little worse for him, I'm sure. But here's what I know. Some people's lives, as funny as that was, when it really gets down to the real thing, it's real. And it hurts. And it doesn't work out. And the pain is bigger than what we have. Peter was there. Whoop. 
We got him back. He's in the middle, and guess where Peter's at? He's going down in the water right now. His focus was off. His faith was jeopardized seemingly. His fellowship wasn't going to happen. He had totally lost all goals of even seeing Jesus anymore. He's down. He's under the water. But there's one last turn as we close today. Here's what it is. This is beautiful. Here's what we find. Peter said the magic words. <laughs> They're not magic at all. They just work. They're factually in order with how God works. They're principles. He said these words, Lord, save me! He screamed them out. And guess what? Again, this has been a great time. You know, if Jesus, in his little sarcasm moment, you know, like I would have done, he could have like touched his hand and then put his head under his foot and went, let's see the bubbles, baby. I'm going to see some bubbles for a while. You know, we're going to make this dude pay. No, the Bible says Jesus immediately stretched forth his hand. And he pulls Peter up. Peter's gasping, man. He's like, ooh, you know, he's alive. And he pulls him up and they walk back to the boat. Now here's the significance of everything that we know. When we're looking at the worst of times, God does the best of things. In the worst of times... God does the best of things. I know this because I've experienced it. Peter was now back in the boat. And they got back to the boat. And, and when he got back to the boat, the Bible says, Jesus made the wind cease. The storm was over. Here's another little quick sideline takeaway. If you're in the middle of the heat right now, you got a battle, you got something that's just killing you right now, it will end if you give it to God. I'm serious. The war, the battle, the storm, whatever you want to look at right now, whatever you're in that's tearing you apart, there is an end to it. God will make sure that you're taken care of in His time. You see, this whole time, God didn't just come in and go, okay, storm's done, wind's done. Nope. They went through the whole thing. Peter reaches out and feels that hand, and he's rescued. Oh, man. There's nothing like that. And they step back in the boat, and the wind ceased. The Bible says the wind stopped. Oh, it's beautiful. And now here's where the clincher was. Jesus says, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? You see, when it comes right down to it, God is in charge. God is able to change every circumstance that you have, that I have, Peter had. He's able to do it. If we're minding God and we step out of the boat when God calls us and we take our faith and our focus where it should be, I tell you what, the fellowship that comes there while you're walking is not to be compared. There's nothing like it. They got back. Jesus disciplines them because he loves them. He gets them back in order to say, why would you doubt? I would say this today for 2018. Why would you consider doubting God's power for your circumstance and your situation? Why would you consider trying to do it in your own strength or somebody else's strength than just giving it to God? My challenge to me, to you, teens, as we get ready to celebrate all the way past, I don't know if the ball's going to drop or snowman's going to drop. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be cool. It's going to be cold. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. But 2018 is going to happen. If Jesus tarries, I mean, he could like come back right now. But chances are, as we emerge to this moment, I'm going to challenge you as Jesus did. The reason he asked that question, why wouldn't you believe me? Why wouldn't you trust? Where was your faith? Was because he knew each of them had the capacity to fully trust. And that's all he wanted. What if you and I, this this night, this day, right now. What if you and I said, Jesus, I trust you fully? First thing of salvation. If you don't know Jesus today, you've never repented of your sins, let me just quickly say, that is the anchor and the foundation of everything that could be. Jesus hears the prayer 
of the sinner who's repentant. And he responds just as he did to Peter immediately. You can be forgiven of all your sins right now if you don't have that. I know many under the sound of my voice right now, you've done that. You've been in the faith either for many years or, or, or some time. And you know the power of God is great. But for whatever reason, just because we're all human and we get distracted, we've not trusted him like we could have. We've not given him just everything. We've kind of said, all right, God, I, I like your ideas. Let me get back to you. No. What if right now you said, okay, Jesus, I don't care what you want. Anything you want, I say yes. The first time. What if that happened today? Here's what I know. <laughs> All the people that were in that boat, they got back up there and boy, they were like patting Peter on the back and he was probably still coughing up water and whatever else. And Jesus gives them that little lesson. But guess what the rest of the crew said? You see, they weren't, they weren't on some break at some little dock somewhere drinking Starbucks. No, no, no. They were, they were in this fight too for survival and they'd watched Peter almost die, but then he came back and Jesus was there. And you know what every one of them said? Of a truth. You really are the Son of God. See, they had the same doubts that Peter did. Peter had been doubting just a little bit still, even though he'd seemingly seen it all. Been with Jesus in person, he's still doubting. So it doesn't surprise me that you and I struggle a little bit 2,000 years removed from the person being on earth, the very Son of God. But here's what I would say this. Every one of them said, you really are the Son of God. Everything changed in that moment. Not only for Peter, but everybody around him. Nick, this year, your teens, I'm excited. God's doing great things. What if every one of our teenagers said, you know what, I'm going to trust Jesus as my personal Savior, and I'm going to walk this thing out with God. You know what's going to happen? Every middle school, every high school, every playground, every sports field, every basketball court, all the volleyball games, guess what? God changes everything. Wherever Jesus is, one old songwriter said, "Tis heaven there. What about a little bit of heaven? I'm up for that. I've seen plenty of the other side. I certainly don't ever want to go there. But what if we let Jesus do what he wants to do? That moment, they all were captured in the person of Jesus. Focus was in the right place. Faith was secure in the right person. And their fellowship of position, that position that they had, <laughs> oh man, they were spoiled. There would never be anything else like it. I tell my teenagers all the time, we hang out, we have great times, man. We stay up, we play. We, when I lay down at night, my wife tells me, she says, it's beautiful, you have 10 seconds. It's like going to surgery. 10, 9, 8. I use it all up. Time to recharge. I tell my teens, give it to Jesus. Every time they do, the world changes. I have one guy right now, he came up to me not too long ago, and we're going to close right now. Hunter came up to me and he said, hey, God's done some amazing things in my life. Hunter's a uh, sophomore this year, and God's done some amazing things. And he said, hey, hey here's what's up. I, I want to start taking some time out with my friends to have a special prayer meeting, not at church. But what can we do? And I said, dude, get all your friends together. And he picked the day, the time, two hours they set aside, 3.30 to 5.30 every Tuesday. They get together and they pray. Wow. I'm telling you something, guys. If you want in where it's at, okay? I know there's a lot of cool stuff in the world. But if you want to get in where it's at, you talk to God about the stuff that God is concerned about. And your world will change. You will have the most freedom, the most fun, the most friends of the right kind that you've ever experienced. Oh, it's lonely. It's challenging. There's all kinds of setbacks. But there's nothing to compare to it. The disciples, church, the disciples found in that day fulfillment in the kingdom. In a little boat floating in the middle of the water. Wow. You and I, man, we, we've got it all. We're sitting in padded seats, carpet, heat. I know it's cold outside, but boy, we're really comfortable right here. 
But as we pray and close today, and I don't know how you normally do that or not, I'm, I'm just going to talk to God with you. I don't know what you need to give to Him. Maybe it is your sin. Maybe it is your selfishness. Maybe it is your future plans. All of your future plans. I, I don't know. But as we pray together today and end, well, this is our last Sunday morning service in, in 2017. What if we just said, Jesus, take it all. Take it all. I want to ride in 2018 with no reservation. I want to do exactly what you want. Dear God, I thank you for this congregation. Represented here many, many years, far longer than I've had, of serving you. I know there's brand new people here today, and I, I know there are some that have been serving you for maybe a small period of time. There's a mix and a match. But you're real in every one of those circumstances. God, I don't know if someone is caught literally in the storm of sin and is ravaging their lives, their physical, emotional, certainly their spiritual existence. They feel like they are literally going to die. I pray right now that they would simply reach up and say, Jesus, save me from my sin. I pray for that right now. And I know if that's humbly prayed and meaningful, that you'll do it just like that. I pray for salvation today. Oh God, I pray for surrendered and sanctified lives today. Those that have been following, but maybe with a, a, a serious reservation like Peter had, if that's really you, God, or if you think you could help me, or maybe someday... No, what if all reservation was gone and built on the salvation moment that they've had, they would open up to God's Holy Spirit and say, fill me, cleanse me, use me. Oh God, would you make that happen today? I pray for this waiting congregation and their pastor. I pray that you'd recoup him on his break and his wife and, and their team here. God, would you bring this church family, God, to, to new days in 2018. I, I don't know what all that means, but I'm just praying that as they release and surrender full control to you, trust you fully, that you'll make everything new. Do it today. I, I know Hastings will never be the same. Nebraska very likely will never be the same. Our world can change because of what happens in this room today. Focus, faith, and fellowshipping. Lined up with God. For all this, God, we just trust you fully. We commit all of these, from the youngest to the oldest here, we commit all of our lives to you. And we pray it in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening. And I hope you have a happy, happy new year. God bless you.